Hello friends, welcome back. In today's video, we are going to see how to use ADC IC HX711. We will try to use this IC for range scale application. Let us see how to do it. Of course, we are going to interface this chip with ESP32. So let us add the components. So go here, click here on plus sign and search HX711. So we are going to use 5kg dot cell. So click over here, you can get the information regarding the HX711. So these are the pinouts for this IC. This is the serial data, serial clock and fourth one is ground. Next we are going to add the LCD display. Use this display. We will add one key over here as well. So this push button is added. Let us get some information regarding this LC. This is the standard configuration for the LC we are going to use. So these are the pinouts given for this LC. We can go through it. Now let us do the connections. Add VCC and ground. This view is used for controlling the brightness. So we are directly connecting it to the VCC. Connect ground to this T. We'll change the color. Maybe red. I think the connections are over now. Let us see the coding part. This is the sketch or the code for this application. So let us check the pin connection for LCD 23, 22, 5, 17, 16, 4. This one is 19, this one is 18 for the HX711 ADC. So before this, you need to go to the library manager, just add this library HX711 ADC. We will again add one more library for the LCD that is liquid cluster display.
once it is done let us go to the sketch and we will see the coding part over here so include these libraries that is hx711 underscore adc dot h and next is liquid crystal dot h do the definition over here define the pins for the adc and lc declare the tear pin as 25 then we will set the overload value for the weight as 5 kg right now. In this setup, we are going to set the serial port at 9600 baud rate. We are going to set the tear pin as input with pull up. Here the load cell is initialized. So here the operation is started. The calibration factor is set as 0.42 and here the LCD, here the LCD is initialized and the measurement is done over here in the loop section. Load cell update function is called to refresh the latest weight. We are reading the data from the load cell and storing in storing that into the I variable. We are going to display the weight in terms of grams. If the overload happens, we are going to display the overload message. We have added the tear function over here. When you press this push button, then tearing will happen whatever is the weight there, it will be treated as zero. So this is the coding part and let us see what happens when we execute the code. Start the simulation. So weight is zero right now. Let us change the weight. It is 1.11 kg, that means 11110 grams. Increase the weight to 2.88. Now it is showing 2.879, that means 2.88 kilogram or 2879 gram. Let us come to the final stage. Make it 5 kg. So it is showing overload. Just reduce the weight to 4.93. Now the scale is showing 4929 grams. You can see the serial output over here. Then we will reduce the weight to 2 kg. And now we will press the tear button. So tearing is happening. Now this weight will be treated at zero. Now let us go to 4 kg. So now it is showing 2010 or 2.01 kg. Right, for five, it should it should be showing overload for us. So for three kg, we are going to try. It should show one kg. Yes, it is showing one thousand grams. Try to go towards the negative side. So it will show the negative weight. Let us go to the zero and tear it again.
So range scale is showing zero gram, just increasing to 1.35 kilogram. Increase it to 1.35 kg. So now it is showing 1.350 grams. So it seems our load cell is working. That's it for today. Thanks for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you like this video, then please hit the like button. Please share this video with your friends. And do not forget to subscribe to this channel. Thanks again and have a good time.